Hi again. Uh, this is uh, part two of the entomology illustration. Um, this part we're going to go over the actual assignment. So the first video, I'm hoping you watched it, is on um, rehydrating and mounting your insect specimen. Um, this one is going to be about what the actual project is going to be. Excuse me. And <clears throat> this piece that I have up right now is just a really good example of what your project should be like. Um, let me find another. Uh, here's the overview of the project. We'll pull up the job, the project sheet in just a minute. Um, but this is the kind of thing that you're looking for in your piece. A beautiful um, illustration of your insect. It can be in black and white or full color, whichever you want to work with. Um, scientific name, common name, uh, sex, a description, the class, the order, the family, uh, a little map showing the location. It might be North America, might be somewhere else in the world. This is showing it actual size, so say on an 8.5 by 11 page, um, what would the actual size of this be? And then you want an inset that shows some detailed part of the anatomy, whether that be the head uh, showing the mouth pieces, or whether <clears throat> possibly it's a real close up on the wing or something. It's kind of up to you, but um, which is again where you see without using your camera to zoom or maybe that microscope um, could be a good option to get in and really see some of those amazing details like these little antenna here uh, and the little hairs. It's just this is a really well done piece. Um, this uh, Mika Patel's piece, again she did a really good job, um, has all the parts in it color, layout, it's all just really, really beautiful. Her color kind of complements the butterfly. Um, and then the sidebar that has the description of her process, uh, how she kind of went about the project, and um, her references. So make sure you keep track of your references where you go to find these things. Let's see what else. Both of these pieces are on the uh, in Go Studio, so here in Entomology, um, here's a project visual overview and here's a sample project. Those are both uh, both of the things we just looked at. Um, let's see what else, if I can. Come on up here. All right, we'll download it again. Ah, entomology, right there. Here's the project sheet. So here's the project sheet. Please open this up and read through it. Um, the steps, rehydrating, spreading and mounting, measuring, documenting, researching, uh, line and color value study, layout and labeling, and then it, everything now is due April 23rd. That's just kind of our cutoff date. Uh, there's pre-class readings, which you're going to find in the Go Studio folder. Um, great videos on the rehydrating process, mounting beetles, spreading beetle wings, and here's a, this page here, if we follow this link. Um, this goes to the butterfly company, this is where we got them. Uh, this goes to their video page, and it just, they have all kind of videos, great, great reference. Um, everything you could want to want to know about this. They even have a thing on like a tarantulas and scorpions. Very cool. Let me go back to where I was. Uh, we covered this. Uh, what you're going to see is a posterior superior view, a detailed inset, the size select location map, identifying taxonomy, um, which is kind of the family of where it comes from, scientific name, common name, all this stuff we talked about. Uh, correct labeling and leader lines, um, and include a separate one-third page column with your name, description, your working process, and your references. Eight and a half by eleven horizontal, plus the one-third page, um, and then a digital output. You you are welcome to, of course, do this traditionally if you wanted to, but um, however you want to do it, it's fine with me. Let's see, let's go back here. What else do we have? 
Uh, these videos, we've seen these. Um, pre class uh, insect morphology. Um, here's several links, and they're also on that page. Morphology is like insect anatomy, um, and this is going to tell you all about the different types of insects and their different anatomy. So you can learn about that. I'll show you some sites here in a couple minutes. Uh, the butterfly board, I talked about this in the video. If you're um, doing a butterfly and you want to build a butterfly board, two of these out of foam core, two of these out of foam core, and I just put them together with uh, straight pins and it, it's strong enough to hold for a butterfly, of course. Oops, don't want that. Where are we at? Close your own window. What else is in here? Oh, there's a couple presentations by <coughs> Mad Scientist. Uh, Mad Scientist is a group here in Westerville, and they run the, uh, a wetlands project out here, and they study botany and entomology and a lot of other n natural sciences. Um, typically, they come into class and give a presentation and talk to all of us about the insects. Uh, we didn't get that opportunity this year, but here's uh, two presentations <coughs> from past Pardon me. There's two presentations from past uh, presentation. Two. Ah, you figure it out. PDFs from past presentations. I'm sorry. It's uh, getting a little late in the day. Um, and sample projects. So let me show you some of these other sites up here that we're gonna are gonna help you out a lot. Uh, let's start with the butterfly company. Well, let's start back here with the butterfly company. This is the butterfly company. And remember, I told you to hang on to that label. If you hold on to that label, you're going to find this identification number. If you go up to this search bar and you type in that identification number, so here's the search box, you put this identification number in, it'll bring you to this page. And right away it tells you that this thing is from Phoenix, Arizona. It's a male. It's called a unicorn beetle. Um, and then that's a huge start for what you need uh, for your, for your uh, project. Um, Wikipedia is also an excellent source. Right over here you get the uh, the class, the order, the family, so a lot of that, and you can learn, you know, find out where it's from, um, so you can build your map off of this, <coughs> the taxonomy off of this. Uh, it's, it's not so hard if you know where to go look for this stuff. Uh, this is the um, red winged grasshopper, so if I did the search it got me to this page, and then I can click on that, and then here's my giant red winged grasshopper. A couple of you have uh, from Peru. Uh, that's a female specimen, um, and then you can go look that up on uh, like Wikipedia, something like that. For the inset, and then you have to show a close-up inset of some part of it. Uh, this is just for mine for the unicorn beetle. Um, this isn't actually even it. This is a flower beetle, which I also have a sample of too. Um, I found a really interesting scientific paper <coughs> that talks about um, the hairs. Uh, is this one about the hairs? Let me think. Yeah, sensory hairs on the head horn of the Asian rhinoceros beetle. So yeah, that's uh, mine's the unicorn beetle, the rhinoceros beetle. It's similar. But um, anyhow, it gives you an idea of like what those hairs are used for. And I think there were some microscopic images on here. Let me see. Might be wrong about I'm wrong about that, I think. But anyhow, um, a good site gives you some reference. But you can find scientific papers like that. You can also just find, you know, neat uh, insect sites that are going to tell you things like that. This is one of the Mad Scientist presentations. You'll find that on Ghost Studio. Go back to our page. Let's see. We did that. We did that. We did that. We did that. Oh, give me a second. I'm going to make you a little ill here. Um, this is explaining the taxonomy. Um, so you can understand what you're looking for. Just the, the concept of it, not the exact information you're going to need. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then there's a couple other things. There's the morphology or the anatomy for butterflies. Um, and this is visual, info visual, info visual dot info slash en slash biology dash animal slash butterfly. So you could go find that site 
Uh, here's another one for insect anatomy. This has a bee. It's a spider. Some other animals on there. You can find all this stuff online just for some general searches. Um, insect morphology. Type in insect morphology or insect anatomy and morphology. Something like that. And then we're back to the how-to pages. Um, so that's the generalized, uh, the general project. And again, um, you saw some of these samples. Uh, we saw amigas. Here's the red-winged um, grasshopper that Josh did last year, the year before. I don't remember. He chose to do his in black and white. Uh, let's see. Oh, the, the postman butterfly. This one's kind of nice. This is quite beautiful, actually. Let's just be straight up with that. Uh, the typeface is fun. It it, it all kind of works with the kind of the international travel, like it's a postcard or a, an aged piece of paper or something like that. But very nice piece. And I showed you some of these. Um, scorpion. I think this illustration could have been a little more, um, it's almost too dark. It could have been a little more detailed. And these could have been much more detailed. That, I, think, I think those kind of fell off his radar at the very end. Nice piece though, but you know, a few problems. Um, Lanternfly. That's the one I showed you in the video. They say it got kind of smashed. Um, that's not, this is not her lantern fly, but this is her uh, lantern fly. And again, this is a looser, more painterly style, which is, you know, totally doable as long as it's accurate. I would prefer, um, a more scientific, perfectly rendered piece, but this is totally acceptable. She got an excellent grade on this, so you're not going to get marked down for that. Um, do, do kind of what fits in your style. Let's see, I had one other thing I wanted to show you. I'm going to pause this for a second. I forgot to pull these photos up. Just give me just a second. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I found what I was looking for in my um, Google Photos. Here is the... Uh, so these are some photos from uh, class last year and the year before. Um, this is the beetle, and I had mentioned him earlier in the previous video about how this dude was pinned up, and we had some foam core down and his wing was all pinned and uh, you know, just pins holding this everywhere. This is what your insect is going to look like. Um, just really, really pinned up pretty well. Um, <clears throat> a few pictures from class. Uh, rehydrating. She's got a bowl of warm water. Hers was uh, really kind of hard to get loosened up, so uh, we put warm water on it. Um, using the magnifying glass here. Fist bumping a dung beetle, because you never know a dung beetle till you fist bump one. Paul was a pretty crazy guy. He was a freshman that was in the class. He was just a riot. There's some more. Okay, here's uh, here's his dung beetle, all pinned out and ready to go. Uh, Jessica Razor, I think she may have had a dung beetle too. I'm not sure what the thing was with the dung beetles that year. Look at that thing. It's like that scene in the Matrix, you know, where they're trying to get Nemo's muscles re-stimulated. <laughs> Anyhow, that's just wrong. Okay, um, just some photos of what we did here. That She's floating him on hot water <clears throat> to get his legs loosened up. I guess we had a real problem with that. This is that re one of the real tiny bugs. He was kind of not happy about that. It came out really good, though. His piece came out really good. He did a great big, he did a real different project. Talked to me ahead of time. Did a great big thing where he um, had did this bug and made these giant wall stickers out of it and made this whole, like, pack for kids where you could get wall stickers and playing cards. Um, he just really went wild with it, and it was really a lot of fun to see his final project on this. There's that beetle again. Research. Another tiny one. A 
really, I mean, I just, I wish we were doing this in class because some of the community spirit that we had a really good time um, of pinning up these bugs. It, it, was, it was a lot of fun. That was a little beetle and he was iridescent. He was, he was really bright purple, very pretty. Oh, and then there's our anatomy drawings. And I've got one more set of photos. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, come on. found them on back. Let's see. Um, all right. So here I wanted to show you this. This was a, <coughs> this was a rah, 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 yellow swallowtail butterfly, I believe, that I found last year when we were on vacation in um, Hocking Hills. And uh, we, we found two of them. It was just kind of that season. We found this one floating in the river. It had just died. Uh, so it was actually a really, really good specimen. Maybe that's kind of sick, but that's what it was. Um, oh, tiger swallowtail. Sorry, I had that wrong. But this is just, um, I didn't measure and stuff. It's just eyeballed. I just drew it right from observation. I had a couple of those. There's kind of early on. Always keep your eyes on my close. Let's see what else is in here. There's that one, that one, that one. I thought I had some more from class. Oh, I do. Okay, here's what I really wanted to show you. All right, this is one of the measured drawings. So this is that lanternfly. And um, they were using little rulers. Uh, they were using and uh, little plastic rulers that we had, but you can use anything. Um, and measuring them in millimeters. And this is a measured drawing. This is what the final drawing was taken from. We have another one here. Here's another one where everything was measured. So there's a sketch. It was a, maybe a looser sketch, but everything was measured. And then um, you could draw it freehand, or you could draw it in like a Photoshop or an Illustrator and set up a grid. It's probably be the best way to do it. Would be to, just like we did with the eye, um, set up a grid template and just go in and draw right over it. Uh, but you got all the measurements there. Let's see what else I have here. A couple pictures of students in class working on their drawings. He extended both wings. That was a pretty impressive specimen. That was a big one. Tarantula that Ben did. That dude was stinky, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, what was this one called? Mm, can't remember. But you see her measured drawing here. She's working on it. It might be a better one there. Can you see a little bit better? Oh, there's some, there's the ruler that we had. That's kind of hard. It's just a, there it is. It's just a little tiny uh, clear ruler. Maybe just easy because you can see through it. Um, there's the scorpion. One of the scorpions. We had a couple scorpions, and those stunk really bad, too. Uh, and then these are from the insect collection. And this, um, the time of year we did it, it was just beautiful out, and we actually got to go down to the wetlands uh, with the mad scientists, um, and uh, they, would, they caught a bunch of insects. We caught a bunch of insects that day, and they identified them for us. And it was just a really, really fun time, and I'm just bummed that you all are um, missing out on that. So, but these things do happen. And I think that's, uh, I think that's all I have to tell you about that. So, um, good luck with rehydrating your bugs. And if you run into any questions at all, please don't hesitate to uh, email me, let me know, um, or I mean, contact me through Slack, whatever it takes, and we'll get you going. Um, this is a fun project. Oh, wait, one more thing. Gosh, how did I almost forget about that? This, the steampunk bug. All right, just because our world is so weird right now, if you want to have a little fun, 
and you want to do something like the steampunk uh, beetle, like I did. Again, this is just my reference where I found all my gears and everything. There's going to be an actual drawing slash painting off of this. If you want to do something like this with your bug, go for it. It has to be super well done though, and by that I mean you need to um, you need to do it like this. You need to do it like this. So steampunk bug, where is he from? The size, what's all his anatomy? It doesn't have to be his morphology. It doesn't have to be standard morphology. What's his name? Uh, so like, um, I can't even remember the name of that one. The one I have is a rhinoceros beetle, and I would probably call it, you know, I'd add like whatever its scientific name was plus roboticus or something. I don't know. Um, and, but you're going to have to make up all this. So you have to be a good storyteller. Got to be a good illustrator. Got to be a good storyteller. Got to be a good scientist. So it's a super challenging project. But if some of you want to do it, I think it would be awesome. It would probably be really, really, really fun. Um, might take a little extra work, but, you know, good things do take a little extra work. So, again, don't be afraid to go um, to the steampunk bug kind of thing or some other avenue if you can think of it talk to me about it convince me why it's a great idea and make it look just like the other finals but with your own kind of unique twist on it totally cool with that so that's it for me tonight um i hope to talk to you guys soon i hope you're all doing well hang in there guys